Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, as promised. We're gonna try out some of these gouache palettes. Now, I've got a funny story. I'm actually um, I'm actually going to be going out doing some plein air painting today, so I thought I would get these ready to go and at least give one of them a try while I was out. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you these palettes really quickly. Um, I did show these on Snapchat when, I, when they came in. But I've been looking for a way that I could do some gouache plein air painting and I have some of these like jelly cup sets that I like but they're so heavy and I don't need to bring that much with me because it's like these each of these cups is like 30 mls of paint and that's like two standard tubes you don't need that much you know I've been working I've been using this set of gouache I have several sets but I've been using this one for like a year almost exclusively and I'm still barely making a dent so I'm going to use this superior palette today. This is what it looks like on the box, but it's got a strap so you can wear it like a like a purse or a like a, a lanyard. And then it's got uh, a water cup, which I'm actually going to try using um, using water brushes. So I don't even know if I'll bring this portion of it, but that latches right in. And then this has a. Um, it's still kind of stiff to open because it's new. I'm always afraid I'm going to break it because it's. it seems like it unsnaps pretty hard. But it's got this mixing area here. It's got a silicone gasket to um, keep the paint fresh. So I guess you could use acrylics in here if you wanted to. Um, or, or, of course, watercolors. Um, although I might keep the little cup just to keep this in a napkin in or something. But anyways, I'm going to fill this up with gouache today with you on camera. And then I also bought this one, but I think I need to let the gouache dry out a little bit if I use this. But I just really love the layout of this palette. And I and I thought um, this might be really nice to do like a hybrid gouache and watercolor palette. So this slides, the top slides out, which you could use that as a mixing area, I suppose. But there's also this area here that will slide out and you can have them go whichever way you want and then this is kind of exciting this part right here flips out and you've got another mixing area and then you've got this this place here that actually will fit half pans so I thought um, because I saw another artist I believe it was uh, John Mural Muralaz that used a combination of transparent watercolors and gouache and I thought I've got some pans right here that I don't really have you know, I need for another palette, I could put those in there and put some gouache in and then have a combination. So that's my plan for this. And also, as the gouache starts to dry, I'm going to push it down with my fingers to kind of compress it. Another John Muir Laws tip. And um, if I use water brushes with that, I think it will be good. It's got a little lid and the palette, the, the thing goes all the way to the top, so I don't think I'll get like seepage. But I could put a little bit of fun foam or rubber gasket or something in there if I need to to um, to seal it. I don't think I'm going to need to if I just let them like firm up a little bit. So uh, what I have here is my gouache and um, I think this palette knife will work good and I'm just going to go through and I'm going to try to figure out what colors I am likely to want to use the most. I definitely am going to want white and um, I just wanted to, so I'm going to put white kind of in, I think I'll put it right in the middle. I want to make sure I can really fill that up. Um, what was I going to say? Oh my gosh, I forgot. I guess I don't need to fill it up all the way to the top because I might not like this this design. I also need to use a rag to wipe this off in my colors. I think I'll probably work light to dark with my colors here. So I definitely use white a lot. I use yellow ochre. I might not put all the colors just because um, I don't know if I'm going to like it, so I might not want to put so many in there. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, so like these, this type of palette can tend to um, dry out and so what I do is I just spritz it with water I'll, I'll you know I'll do I'll spritz it with alcohol like rubbing alcohol and then I'll spritz it with water and then stir it and I and I've only done that like twice in like the last two years so it's not like you need to do that a lot but it does um it does help keep things nice and fresh I think I'll do a burnt umber here that one is one that tends to get kind of thick Uh, let's see, no one be another. I need some, oh, you know what, this set doesn't have ultramarine blue. I might need to go, I might go grab some ultramarine blue, because that is a color I like to have. I'll grab some of the Prussian blue, though. Um, yeah, grab some Prussian. And... I got ultramarine in the other room. I don't have any. Oh, I might have some here. Anyway, uh, let's see. I think I'll do my yellows. I should do my yellows next before I get this all too gross. Um, 
We'll definitely want a nice warm yellow. I'll put it near the yellow ochre. Yeah, I wonder how well these will stay from getting contaminated with one another. Um, I'll put some lemon yellow. And I do like the Naples yellow, even though that's a convenience mix. I think I will still take some because I do like Naples yellow. Um, maybe I'll put that by the uh, white. That's nice because I like to paint a lot on the coast. So, you know, the sand, not a lot of sand in this area of Maine, to be honest, but there is, you know, there's sand. <laughs> And then for my reds, I think I want a nice, um, I think I'll want a nice crimson and also kind of like a more of a cadmium red. So I'm gonna go with, where do I wanna put it? I think, you know, I think I'll put it right here. This holds quite a bit of paint, to be honest. I mean, it's not, I'm not gonna be running out of that in one paint session for sure. And I'll probably be using like a six by eight sketchbook. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think if that, do I want that or do I want that? Is that more of an orange or is that more of a red? I think I will take this because it is a step away and I think that will be a little bit more useful. All right, I'm going to pause the camera and go find some ultramarine, so I'll be right back. I found uh, this tube of ultramarine that's, that's uh, now it's getting towards the end, so I think I'll use that up. I like to use these tube bringers because it lets me get every last bit of um, of paint out. I mean, it's all. I mean, I know I have plenty, so it probably seems pretty silly, but why waste it, you know? Easier said than done. You know, I always squeeze out as much as I can, then I'll go in with the with the um, with the twister thing. I think that, uh, I don't think there's much difference between the jelly gouache consistency and tube gouache. I get asked that a lot, but I haven't really noticed much of a difference. Uh, I think it's just more of like what you like personally. Um, I mean, I, I like being able to take one lid off a palette and have everything there ready to go, but that's just me, you know? If you like to, to like put it out on a palette fresh every time, the tubes would be more, would be more convenient. There, use that up. Okay, so now I've got a few colors, a few spaces left, and I just need to determine what else I think would be useful. Um, a nice green, I think. Um, I need to clean my palette knife. This is the exciting part of arting that you usually don't get to see on videos because people with common sense don't put this in their videos. Uh, let's see, this is kind of a nice green here. I actually did grab another palette because I was just wondering if the colors might be a little bit different. Um, and also, I really ought to give these a squirt. So I have these. I got into review a while ago, and I haven't really used them much. Honestly, I really liked that um, that brand a little bit better, and they're all very similar. I don't think I might grab some of that tealy color, but I think I will go with that green. I like that green a lot, and it's it's pretty um, it's pretty natural looking. So I'll take a big scoop. Well, not even a big scoop. I'll take a decent sized scoop and put that in there. And then I feel like I might want a brighter green as well, just because like if I add yellow to that, it's still gonna be kind of murky because this is a really kind of like a convenience color. I don't think I'd want to mix that one too much because it's kind of like uh, gouache is opaque and that color is just kind of dull to begin with. So I think I'll want something a little bit brighter for convenience mixes. So I think I'll go with, I think I'll go with this one because it seems to be pretty much um, pretty much just a straight green and then I can add blue or I can add yellow to that 
or even red and get a more muted green or I can just grab that muted green. So the reason I have two greens in here, even though it's a convenience color, is because I'm going to be out and about and uh, time will be of the essence and I'll want to be, you know, painting quickly. And then for the smaller palettes, I think I'll get some black, even though I don't tend to use black too much. I think with gouache and like, you know, fast painting, I'll want it and I think I'll put that up near the blue since that's, I wouldn't want to put it right next to something that would get easily contaminated. And I will try to fill it right up because I think that's something I will use. Now the reason I kind of want to use up this paint is because this particular set is no longer being made. Oh gosh, I'm going to try to save some money by, or tried to save some paint and I ended up smearing it. So yeah, this might not be the best solution. I might find that I'm just contaminating my colors too easily with this. I don't know. That's why I have to actually use it and see how it goes. Now I've got three more spots for color. Maybe I'll do a pink because um, it's nice to do pink underpainting sometimes. You know, it can make your greens really pop. How did I manage to look at that? I'm making such a mess. I'm seeing the flaw. I'm seeing a flaw in the system. <laughs> oh, I, maybe I shouldn't be taking out this much. Well, I will get back to you. Look at that. I'm wasting a lot. Luckily, it's inexpensive paint, but still. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be taking out this much, but... No, no, until we try. I will take one for the team. Might as well take one for the team because I do get sent a lot of these things to review and I've got other gouache, jelly gouache sets to review anyway, so I might as well. Now, is there anything else I think I would really want here? Maybe, um, maybe some of that kind of like periwinkle. That might be nice for some skies or faraway mountains. We, like I said, we got it. Let's see, put that over there. Yeah, my palette, I really maybe should have thought about how I was going to arrange my colors a little bit more before I started putting them in there because now I'm feeling that I should have gone more in a rainbow order instead of the kind of more random nature that I took, but... Um, and then my last color, what do I want to put in there? I think I'll go with Burnt Sienna because I do use that a lot, even though we have a Burnt Umber. I think I'll try that and then uh, we'll see what we end up using when I actually go out and paint. This is a pretty good sized palette knife, I have to say. You could probably use like a, uh, um, like a popsicle stick as well. And there we go. So now I'm going to put this gasket back on. Ah, oh, something tells me this is going to be messy. So this is. This is method one. <laughs> method one of my madness. Oh, the gasket goes on really easily, which is nice. And then I'm just going to latch it. Is that latched? Oh, that's, is that? Yep, that's latched. It latches shut really easily. It opens a little bit harder, but there we have that. And then it's going to, I'm going to put a paper towel right in there now so I don't forget because I'm going to head out. Um, I took, so I took the dog. So a friend of mine invited me to join her and another one of our friends on a hike this morning with our dogs. And um, it, the train was really rough, so I let the dog off her leash, and I put the leash in my pocket, and I dropped it somewhere on the um, I dropped it somewhere on the trail. So I'm gonna go back and see if I can find the leash and do some painting while I'm at it. So now the other palette we have here is this lovely Jerry Q palette. I'm just gonna wipe my I'm gonna wipe my gouache right on my jeans. Oh my! Now I really look like an artist. Okay, so I think I want to do some, I'll put some regular watercolor pans in here as well. And, you know, I think I'm just going to, I think I'll just put a full range. So I've got a, like a, a cool red, a warm red, a, oh, darn it, that's not going to fit. Seriously? Oh, shoot, that one's not going to fit. That's all right, because actually... 
that's actually a cadmium color. I don't really want to bring a cadmium color. So warm yellow, cool yellow. And then I've got a cool green, phthalo green and ultramarine blue. So there we've got our split primary up there. Um, what is this? That's sepia. Oh, that must be a Shaminka color. I wonder if that pen will fit. That's in there because I actually don't really... I'm not a big fan of the Shminka. Well, I'm not a big fan of really using sepia. Now, this is a black Sennelier. Is it black or Payne's Gray? It doesn't say. Number 755, whatever. I think it's probably a black. That's probably why it's not in my Sennelier palette. Um, and I'll put this brown. Sadly, the sap green is in a full pan, and I can't put that in there. But um, now let's see what we want for gouache. We definitely want some white. And I definitely need to really clean off this rag. Why did I use the rag? I should use paper towels <laughs> for that because well, I guess it doesn't matter. I can rinse it out in the sink and then throw it in the wash. Okay. Well, let's try. We'll start this again. So I'm definitely going to want white for my gouache colors. Oh, and we're going to do this in a pan. So maybe I can stay a little bit cleaner. I bought a whole tube of um, Refill Himmy White Gouache, like a 100 ml like tube. It was like a packet. I'm thinking, I wonder if I should have two whites. Um, I like how I can move this around. I can actually use a palette knife and lift these out if I want to. But I'm just going, I'm going today. Oh, I'm not even going to take this one with me today. Um... So, I don't know, I guess I could do two whites. That would make sense because that's a color you're going to run out of and risk contaminating the easiest. Or I could even bring a tube of white. I don't know, this might be pretty foolish to do this on a limited palette to put two whites in, but... But who knows, right? Who knows? You don't know unless you... Unless you try. Okay, the next... Color. I, I think I want to do my lighter colors with the gouache. To be honest, that was uh, that was a recommendation. So, why don't we do like yellow ochre, or actually maybe a Naples yellow? If we've got, do we have yellow ochre? Oh, I don't have yellow ochre there, but I think Naples yellow. That's something that I would use. It's a convenience color, but uh, this particular one is kind of like a yellow ochre plus white, maybe with a little bit of a lemon in there. And then, then we could do some yellow ochre because I love, I do love to have yellow ochre. And I also feel like I'm going to use way more. Um, uh, way more muted colors than brighter colors. So I have my ultramarine and phthalo blue. So I don't need to double up on those. Um, and I've got a lemon yellow and I have a like a warm yellow, but like a gamboge. Maybe I'll do like a really warm yellow and I'll do like this, whatever this is. It's kind of like a yellowish orange. And I didn't put that one in the other paint palette. I want these to be a little bit different from one another, I think. These are going to shrink about half the size. Um, I think I want one of those colors in there as well. Let's get that back in. Is this riveting or what? Oh man, this is going to be the video you watch to fall asleep to. That's okay. I watch it. I have those videos in my playlists sometimes. It's like, oh, I want something comforting to fall asleep to. I'll watch somebody swatch something. <laughs> All right, so we'll do our lighter colors. That's what that was. I like that idea. I like the idea of doing the lighter colors. Um, but that feels too light, so I think I'll go with this kind of periwinkle color because that is pretty, pretty light and opaque. Oh, trying not to get them all in my hands. Oh. Well, might as well wash the paint rags with these jeans because I keep wiping my hands. <laughs> um, maybe I will go. We'll have a phthalo and an ultramarine. 
Uh, I just don't want to bring too much. I don't have any greens though, but I'm also not totally keen on those greens. That's all I have. So maybe I will look at my twos and see what I have. I have a permanent green light. Maybe I'll use that. Oh no, 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 why am I doing that? That needs to go, shoot. I want that to go in my pan. Silly. Right, that's no big deal. Look, can't even see it. Look, it never happened. We'll do that, just because I really like the M. Graham gouache. I don't have too many tubes of it. It's kind of expensive. Uh, and I pretty much do gouache and sketchbooks, so it doesn't really matter if I have the best of the best. So let's see what else do I have. Now, because I am going to do painting on location, I really don't want to have, like, this is a cobalt blue, so I really don't want to have that. Pyrrol red. Um, I don't feel like I need that because I have those reds. Unless, well, you know, it might not be a bad idea to have a nice opaque red. But then again, I don't know if I want to waste my uh, M. Graham. And I have cadmium orange. I don't want to use cadmiums when I'm out and about. Um, oh my, what shall I choose? I feel like I have a pretty well-balanced palette. I'm looking to see what else I have in my, in my random tubes. I have Hansi Yellow, but I have that in watercolor. I don't know if I need that to have that in the gouache. I feel like I've got a pretty good selection. You know what? Maybe I will though do a burnt burnt umber or a burnt sienna. Although I do have a sepia, but those are watercolors. I'm just trying to think what colors do I want to have that are really opaque. I've got a yellow already. Um, yeah, maybe I will do a red. I'll do it like a, a neutral red. Because I have, you know, I have a warm and a cool there, so if I do a neutral, that'll be pretty good. Clean off that. I don't want to get green in my red or it's just going to make a yuck color. I don't know if I really kept to the, doing the lighter colors. Um... Last color, big choices, big choices. Maybe I'll go for that convenience green just because it's, um, just trying to think if there's anything else I'd really want to have bright. Oh, it's a tough decision. Hmm. I'd say, what do you think? But you know, this is past Lindsay talking, so. I guess I'll just go with that green. That is a nice green. Maybe I just won't put too much in it because um, in case I change my mind. I'm not, cause I'm not feeling like super like committed, but I don't have to be because these are pans and I've got, I've got plenty of gouache. Do I have enough, you know what? Do I have enough brown? I don't have any brown gouache. I'm going to do, I'm going to do burnt umber actually because I don't have any brown gouache and if I need a, a lot of brown for something or I want opaque brown, the watercolor might not stand up to that. So I'll get the brown. I can tint it with red if I need more of a burnt umber and yellow ochre. I'm going to go with burnt umber. All right. So these I'm going to let set up and I'm just going to, as they dry, I'm going to push down my finger and try to compress them so they don't crack. So that's the idea there. Um, so then I'm not going to let them dry out completely, but I'm thinking that... Um, I just want them set up enough so I could just close that lid down and be able to use it. But today I'm going to go out with this and some water brushes and we'll see how it goes. And uh, it'll be hours for me, but it will just be a few seconds for you. Hey there, I am back for the riveting, riveting conclusion of this video. That's probably like three years long by now. Um, so I went out... Um, to the trails where I dropped the leash and I had to find it and that was about 2, it's about 421 now, I was there less than 2 hours but um, yeah let's take a look. Uh, I This is not going to be the perfect palette for one, I couldn't latch it 
after I was done. So I literally just brought it in. I haven't cleaned anything up because I want to see, I just want you to see exactly, see the, see the, see how the sausage is made, friends. So luckily I put a napkin in the bottom of this, a paper towel, because I need, I would keep my water brushes in there, tip down kind of on the towel to keep them from completely drying out. And I could wipe out my brushes and it was just, it was nice to keep things from disappearing or a napkin blowing away or whatnot. Um, I, the, I'm glad that I had painted near where I was parked because because um, what I did is I walked the trail, I found the leash that I dropped, and then I was kind of looking at stuff, but I didn't want to be kind of deep in the woods by myself. So, um, and I post I posted a reel on Instagram on my adventure, just a, you know, one minute reel if you want to check that out. Um, so this is the gasket, but the issue was, so my first tip will be don't fill it up so full because for two reasons. For one, um, I couldn't get the gasket to seal back down. There was too much crust, too much crusty crud in these in between the colors so I couldn't get it to um to to seal down and also if you're wearing this like a lanyard you know your paint's gonna slide and slip and and I mean maybe if you even didn't have too much in there it still might happen I don't know uh but anyway I couldn't get the seal back down and then this is the state of my the top of my palette and because I wasn't using you know a water bucket I didn't really have anything I could clean that with and the issue I had using the water brushes is that um, they would kind of stop flowing. I thought it was running out of water, but it was that the, the water brushes weren't flowing. Luckily, I had this rag. I, I brought this little sketching bag that had a small sketchbook and um, a couple fine liners and a pencil and a white gel pen. And I just and I threw these water brushes in there. And I thought, I'm going to take my best watercolor brushes, the Derwent ones. They're new. They're probably the best quality ones I have. And I'm bringing crappy ones next time if I decide to, to try this again because I mean it was uh, so hard to get them clean and the liquid the uh, soft wash there was just clogging them up and um, yeah I'm gonna have to like soak these and and clean them up good because it was just the the thickness of the gouache was clogging the water brushes and that was very frustrating um, and yeah and I couldn't get a fine line even with the finest brush and the small third one water brush is really fine let me see is this the one yeah it's really fine and I just it couldn't I couldn't pull a fine line out with it even if I made the paint inky on my palette this really isn't very much mixing space um, so that was frustrating and I had I had a really hard time keeping my my colors clean because it took so much water to clean the brush out that it was like almost impossible not to contaminate it. I know I sound so negative. I'm sorry, I don't think I sound negative, but I want to give you the real deal while it's all fresh in my mind. You know, if I if I wait three days, I'm gonna forget about these aggravating things, which might make for a nicer video because <laughs> I wouldn't be complaining. But I want you to have the real um, the real deal. So here, I really like this until I went to put this big apple tree in front. It's it's um, April. 6th so every nothing is like really budded out you might see little buds on the trees but it's mostly evergreens are green but everything else is just kind of brown and gray but I thought it was funny that there was a sign that said field closed next to this big field and like field closed how can a field be closed it just made me funny kind of made me funny it made me laugh so I thought I got to put that in there and then uh, so I did that kind of sitting by where I was parked on the there's a little bench there and then there was this little dilapidated shack that had like a little pipe with water flowing out of it I don't know exactly what it is but um that was also, I could see it from where I was parked, so I sat on a rock and painted that uh, in this sketchbook, Stillman and Burn, and this is a Hannah Mule Tone Tan, and I started actually a pond here, but it was such a mess, and I dropped my palette, and a bunch of paint of the ultramarine blue was flung onto the lid, so I just toned this paper after I could see that the painting wasn't going very well. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that's all that is. But I mean, that was all right. You could you could see Mount Katahdin in the background. I actually wish I didn't put the tree in because it was actually kind of nice before I put that tree in there. Um, the little the landscape, the layers of landscape that you could see because you could see really far because it was a really clear day and it was really high up. But um, but yeah, this uh, this setup is it needs work. I'm gonna try to scrape off the grime and I'm gonna clean the. The lid and try to get this gasket to fit down again because there's plenty of good paint left in there and I would give it another try but I'm thinking the water brushes I think with the water brushes you probably do need the dry the gouache to be dried down so I'm hoping that when I go up next with the Jerry Q palette that that will work a little bit better for me and I thought that would be enough mixing space but it really isn't with water brushes if I had a rag and a bucket of water I could easily clean between colors I could wipe that off more often 
but um, this, I would say this experiment was not great. The paintings are mediocre, if that, and uh, the experience, well, it was nice to be out in the sunshine, and it's always nice to be outside painting, even if your work isn't going to plan. Um, it was definitely not ideal, and uh, so I will try the other palette and see, and uh, I'll give this another try too. I'm not going to guess from one thing, but oh, when I was putting the, um, trying to get the gasket back in, this came off. I was like trying to snap it, and it wouldn't snap because I couldn't get the gasket, gasket to fit, and that thing popped right off, and I thought I broke it. So if I was deep in the woods and had to lug all this stuff back, and I couldn't like latch this, and I kind of had to carry everything, that would have been really a pain. So I, was, I walked out with this kind of hanging on the lanyard in the bucket here. So, um, so yes, this definitely wasn't perfect. I'm not giving up on it yet, but this is my first, my first try out with these, with this setup in the field. So, um, I hope you found that interesting and we'll see you next time. Happy crafting.